students welcome to this session today we'll be talking about antiarrhythmic drugs which are used in cardiac arrhythmias also called as cardiac dysrhythmias now what is a dysrhythmia or a arrhythmia it is a disturbance of rate anything which is more than 100 anything which is less than 60 would be classified as a dysrhythmia it is a disturbance of the rhythm you know the normal rhythm which is there there is p wave there is qrs complex there is t wave and if there is any disruption in this again this constitutes as a arrhythmia if there is some disturbance in the conduction pathway or the velocity we know that the impulses are going to start from sa node go to av node and then to bundle of his and then they're going to be distributed to the rest of the ventricles or there is difference in or there is some disturbance in site of origin that instead of arising from the sa node it is arising from somewhere else this all can lead to various types of arrhythmias that we will discuss what are the common causes of arrhythmia one of the most common cause of arrhythmia is acute myocardial infarction as you have done in pathology so when there is this necrosis over here it is going to destroy everything over here and hence it carries a risk of producing cardiac arrhythmias it could also be seen in patients who are undergoing cardiovascular surgery so obviously once there is a surgery there is going to be a scar the tissue is going to be cut it is going to affect the pathways which is there and again it can produce arrhythmias it could also happen with anesthesias because they are going to sensitize the myocardium the more notorious are the halogenated hydrocarbons which are going to sensitize the myocardium to the action of various stimulants or which are there normally present in the body it could also be seen in patients with congestive cardiac failure what happens in congestive cardiac failure is the heart it elongates therefore the path length it increases and as a result of which it carries a risk of producing arrhythmias it could also be seen with various drugs there are so many drugs which are notorious for causing arrhythmias please remember the drugs which are used in the arrhythmia they are also called as double edged weapons why because not only they are used in the treatment of arrhythmias but they themselves can also produce arrhythmias of their own so one must be very careful over here and one of the more notorious arrhythmias is qt prolongation also called as torsades d pointis at the end of this session i'll give you a list of few drugs which are known to cause qt prolongation please remember because of this risk which can be fatal at times a number of drugs have been withdrawn from the market just because they have a potential to produce qt prolongation so you must remember from your examination point of view that name the drugs which are responsible for causing qt prolongation and similarly drugs which are used in the treatment of torsades d pointis or qt prolongation then thyrotoxicosis it is again the same mechanism by virtue of which halogenated hydrocarbons which are used as different anesthetics the next is thyrotoxicosis it also sensitizes the myocardium to the effects of epinephrine and norepinephrine which are normal catecholamines present in the body remember thyrotoxicosis accentuate the effects of sympathetic system and therefore they predispose these patients to various arrhythmias so why do we need to treat arrhythmias number 1 as you can see there is a pumping which is involved in the heart which is responsible for normal oxygenation and supply of nutrients to all over the body so whenever there is this change in rhythm change in rate change in origin change in pattern which is there it is going to disrupt this normal supply so therefore it produces hemodynamic disturbances which mainly result in decrease in cardiac output For example if there is a too fast rate there is lesser diastolic filling if there is lesser diastolic filling it means the heart will not be able to pump in systole and therefore again it will make insufficient supply to the rest of the body second is too slowing if the heart rate is too slow that is the exactly opposite the ventricles will be filled to the full capacity and they may not be able to pump the whole complete blood which is there in the ventricles again leading to insufficient oxygenation to the tissues thirdly if there is a asynchronous contraction it means that the atrial contraction and the ventricle contraction rates they are not synchronous we know that atria are going to contract so that the ventricle relax so that they are going to get filled up so when the ventricles contract the atria is going to be closed up so that the blood is going into the rest of the body if there is asynchronous contraction between the atria and ventricle it will again lead to decrease in the cardiac output and therefore it requires a treatment second risk which is associated with the arrhythmias in the body is it can result in what we already have talked about that is prolonged qt syndrome and as you can see there is a p wave there is a qrs complex and this is then followed by a t wave which is there so when this qt interval is increased which is there it carries a risk of fatal arrhythmias which can be disastrous
The second major reason why we need to treat arrhythmias is because it can be disastrous or fatal for the patients. We are already aware about QT prolongation syndrome that I have talked to you about. And this is a serious arrhythmia which have lot of consequences which is mainly death. We also need to treat acute ventricular tachycardia because again this is again a serious arrhythmia which could be fatal. So therefore we have to treat arrhythmias because they affect the cardiac output and they can result in various fetal arrhythmias which are there. Now let's see the ionic basis of cardiac action potential. You can see that there are five different phases. There is phase 0, there is phase 1, there is phase 2, there is phase 3 and phase 4. Now phase 4 which consists of this upstroke which you can see over here, this is because of opening up of sodium channels and as a result of which there is membrane depolarization. The membrane potential rises from minus 70 and goes up to 20 to 22 millivolts which is there. This is then followed up by phase 1 if you can identify this over here. In phase 1 it is a time dependent end of sodium influx which is taking place and there is beginning of potassium efflux and therefore the potential or the positive current it decreases and therefore there is a small decline if you can appreciate over here in phase 1. In phase 2 there is potassium efflux which has already started here from phase 1 and there is a calcium influx which takes place over here and as a result of which you get nearly a plateau which is there which is a hallmark of phase 2. Phase 3 is because of opening up of these potassium channels that you can see it over here and this potassium now leaks into the extracellular fluid and therefore there is a decrease in the amplitude. The phase 4 happens because now the sodium has to go out and the potassium has to come in and this is by the action of sodium potassium ATPase and also there is an exchange of calcium and sodium which takes place over here and this restores or this results in phase 4. So now we are clear that phase 0 occurs mainly because of sodium influx, phase 1 occurs because of ending of sodium influx and beginning of potassium efflux, phase 2 is because of potassium efflux and calcium influx, phase 3 is because of opening up of potassium channels and phase 4 is restoration when the sodium is going to go out, potassium is going to move in by the action of sodium potassium ATPase and also there is going to be exchange of calcium and sodium through sodium calcium pump which is there. Now let's see a few other factors which are important over here. The number one is excitability. Excitability is the property by virtue of which the membrane potential will shift from resting membrane potential to reach the threshold potential. Obviously when the potential reaches the threshold potential there is generation of a new action potential which is over there. Please remember excitability is inversely proportional to threshold potential. Higher the threshold current Lesser is going to be the excitability. Lesser is the threshold current, more is going to be the excitability over here. Similarly, remember automaticity, it is inversely proportional to the time taken to reach threshold potential from the membrane resting potential over here. So it is this time interval which is responsible for automaticity which is there and it is inversely proportional to. So lesser the time to reach over here, more is going to be the automaticity which is there. Now there are various mechanisms by which tachyrhythmias happen. Tachyrhythmias is when the heart rate is going to be more than 100. It could be because of abnormal pacemaker activity. We already are aware that there is a SA node from which it is going to go to the AV node and from AV node through the bundle of phase it is going to go to the rest of the ventricles which is there. If there is an abnormal pacemaker activity it could result in tachyrhythmia. There could be after depolarization which could be early after depolarization or delayed after the depolarization and that is when we are looking at this action potential. So it could be there early after depolarization in the phase 3, after depolarization is in the phase 4. So this is phase 3 and this is the phase 4 which is there. And there could also be there because of a re-entry, I will explain about that a bit later. So, Abnormal pacemaker activity occurs because of enhanced activity. Now what enhances the cardiac activity? We know that the cardiac activity gets stimulated by sympathetic system. So any sympathetic activity as well as sympathomimetic drugs, they can cause enhancement in the pacemaker activity thus resulting in tachyarrhythmias. Similarly, there are certain situations when the non-pacemaker cells, they take over the pacemaker activity, especially under the action of catecholamines, in states of hypokalemia and in states of ischemia, which could all lead to abnormal pacemaker activity, which can contribute to tachyarrhythmia.
happens. After depolarizations, I already told to you, this after depolarization, this is abnormal depolarization which is occurring after the primary depolarization is taking place. It will only produce an action potential if it reaches the threshold potential. So therefore, if the stimulation is strong enough to shift from membrane potential or the resting membrane potential, if this is the threshold potential, if a stimulation is not able to reach the threshold potential over here, it will not generate an action potential. But if the stimulation is able to reach the threshold potential, it will generate a new action potential, which would be again producing a stimulation, which is there. If there is a single action potential, it results in bigemony. We already are aware of that means there are two pulses which are there which you can feel when you pulse, feel the pulse over here and if there are multiple action potentials it can result in trigemony or even can result in sustained arrhythmias in these patients. After depolarization is of two types it is early de after depolarization which occurs in the phase 3 and delayed after depolarization which is occurring in the phase 4. So it is called as EAD and DAD. Now let's see what is re-entry. Re-entry is when more than one path is existing between two points or circular points over here. As you can see, the impulse is coming up over here. It is getting divided into two parts. In case there is any lesion over here, which could be because of ischemia, which could be because of any scar, there is a tissue, it becomes refractory. Obviously, if the tissue is becoming refractory, the impulses will not be able to go through. So what happens? The impulse will travel from one side, it will reach on the other side. And if the tissue is still refractory, it would not go over there and the impulse dies out, there is no problem. The problem would arise if by the time when this impulse comes over here, the refractory period is over and this impulse is able to pass through and therefore it will be stimulating the issues again and again generating action potential 